Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today I wanted to talk about day one versus day two operations. Now I think this topic applies to you whether you're an application developer or an operator or a cloud engineer or whatever your title may be. If you're on a DevOps team or you're operating production or semi-production environments in the cloud or anywhere, it's important to know what day one versus day two means because it's a common way of describing the different operating environments. So let's drop into the whiteboard and check this out. Now, day one is pretty simple. Basically, if you have some application code and you have some infrastructure's code solution that describes your desired state environment, these two code bases can represent your entire solution. And app developers are going to know that over time, you'll probably make changes to your application code when new requirements come up, when you want to make non-functional or functional changes to your application, to your REST API, whatever, whatever it is your application code is doing, you're bound to come into situations where there are deltas that need to be pushed into the code base, probably onto like a main branch or something like that right? And maybe these changes start off in feature branches, depending on what your Git flow process looks like. Maybe they start off in feature branches or the develop branch, but ultimately they're going to make it into your production branch and eventually get pushed out to your production environment. Likewise, deltas are going to be made to your infrastructure's code as well. Infrastructure's code is not immune to configuration changes as requirements change for your application. Let's say your application starts off as a simple REST API that has a SQL database behind the scenes, and you've got a key vault, you know, where you're storing a secret. Your infrastructure's code is going to store the secret into key vault, where your application will go grab that secret um, and use it in order to talk to the database, right? This is a common, this is a common pattern. Well, let's say there's a new feature being added to your application code that requires you to save images or video files, you're probably not going to store that to a SQL database. So your architecture of your application is going to change. So you're going to need to introduce a new service, let's say like Azure storage. And then likewise, you're, you're going to store like an access key or something like that um, into Key Vault. Your application is going to get it just like before um, in order to access the storage account in order to read, create images and videos or whatever, whatever blobs you're storing into to Azure storage. So in this situation, both your application code has to change in order to use the storage SDK in order to talk to the storage account and your infrastructure as code has to change in order to support this feature. So let's back up and talk about day one. Day one, there is no storage account, right? Day one, all we have is the application SQL DB and Key Vault, right? So when we deploy our application on day one, right, we have a version of the code that doesn't have the storage account and we provision the environment and then we deploy our application. So this all happens on day one. Day one is essentially the first time you provision your environment and deploy your application to it. And after day one, every other day after that is considered day two. So day one is kind of the symbolic reference to that first time that you provision your application's environment and deploy your application to it. And day two is a symbolic representation of every other day after that where you provision changes to your environment or not, and you deploy updates of your code. So day two operations is composed of actually three types of deployments. The first type is when only your application code changes. This is when your application developers are just maybe going to modify some logic or add an attribute or something like that that's internal and encapsulated within the application code. There's, there's no changes to the infrastructure or the architecture of your application whatsoever. And in the life cycle of software development, this is probably the most common type of change. The second type of change is an infra only change. So your application doesn't change. So your application code does not change whatsoever. Now, what, what types of changes might these be? This might be anything related to operations or security where it doesn't impact the functionality of the application itself. And it only affects the non-functional aspects of your architecture that are abstracted away from your application code, meaning you don't have to make changes to your application code in order to take advantage of these changes. These might be additional telemetry or logging mechanisms. They might be additional user managed identities to grant access to different actors that need to observe, monitor or access your environment, etc. And these changes will only take place inside your infrastructure's code 
whether that's Terraform, Bicep, ARM, whatever it might be, you're only gonna modify the Terraform code, not the application code. And then the last change, and this is that example that I gave early at the beginning of this talk, is when the functionality of your application is actually driving some architectural change that manifests in your application's environment, such as this storage account over here, right? So we have new functionality, we need to store images and videos, and we don't wanna do that to SQL DB, so we need to light up a new Azure service that's gonna do that for us. Therefore, not only do we have to modify our application code to implement that functionality, but we also have to provision a new resource to Azure to our environment, to our existing environment, to add that storage account to it. And we have to add all of the connective tissue such that the application code that has been programmed to be able to talk to that Azure storage account knows which storage account to talk to. Otherwise, even if we deploy our application code and we provision our storage account, if the application code doesn't know how to talk to that storage account, then our application code is going to break. It's not going to function properly. So this is the more significant change where we add application and infra code updates to our solution. And so again, day two operations, these are gonna happen over and over and over again throughout the life cycle of your application until your, until your application kind of stabilizes. And in the early days of your application, this might happen more frequently as you're adding more features and changing the architecture gradually over time evolving that architecture this is not a revolution right this is an evolution of your architecture on azure but as your application stabilizes the frequency of these updates will likely go down until you're put into maintenance mode right keep the lights on mode where the application has very little changes and maybe we're just making small bug fixes to the application code itself in which case you're probably going to cease to have both app and infra code changes because those require coordination between the application code and the architecture. And you'll probably have more minor defects being made to the application code, or as your enterprise governance evolves, you might have minor changes made to the infrastructure only to tweak the environment and bring it up to code or whatever changes might need to be made. So I hope you found this useful in understanding what day one versus day two operations means. Again, they're not specific days. It's a symbolic day one, the first time you provision something, and then day two, every day after that, in perpetuity forever, until that application's moonlighted and shut down and eventually decommissioned. So when you're working with infrastructure as code, it's important to think about not only day one, but also day two, how you're gonna manage that environment using infrastructure as code after day one, on day two, and every day forward after that. Otherwise, that upfront investment in infrastructure as code might not allow you to maximize the return on investment over time. Anyways, I hope you found this useful. If you're enjoying this content, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, consider channel membership and announce to the world that you are officially an Azure Terraformer. It really helps out a lot. Anyways, that's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer, signing off.